Filtering is a common task in Power Query. You might filter by a single value or maybe a limited number of known values. However, whenever we do that, it always hard codes the value into the M code, which means if we want to change that filter, we've got to go back into the query and edit the query. But what if you want to be more dynamic? And what if you want our filter to be based on a list of items? How can we do that? Well, that's what we're looking at in this video. We're looking at four methods that we can use to filter Power Query with a list. So if you're ready, let's get started. For all of the examples in this video, we're using the following data set. We have a table here from cells A1 to E17, and then we have a list. This is the list that we want to filter the item column by. Then finally, for another example, we have a column list, and we'll look at how we can filter the columns that we have in our output. Now, for the example file, I've loaded all of these into Power Query already, but if you wanted to do this, you would just click inside your table, go to data, and then click from table slash range. If you did that on all the tables, that would load them into Power Query. So once you've done that, let's head over into our first example. So here we are in Power Query, and let's work through this first example of seeing how we can filter by a list. To start with, I'm going to click on the item column, and then I'm going to filter this so that it includes Alpha and Charlie, and then I'll click OK. Now let's have a look what's happening in the formula bar. So we're using a function called table.selectRows. Then the previous step is changed type, so that's the table that we're working with. And then we have each. So this is to show that what's happening is going to happen for every single row in our table. And then we're filtering where the item equals alpha or the item equals Charlie. And this is what we see in the preview window below. What's happening here is actually it's a true or false calculation. So if we just say that each is true, click away, it will return everything in that list. If we say that each is false, it returns nothing in that list. So that means that as long as that section of the function evaluates to true or false, we can determine which rows are returned. Well, let's start by creating a list. Here I have my filter list query. I'm going to select that query and go to transform and convert to list. The alternative option is to right click on the header and then go to drill down. That has now converted this query into a list. And you can see that in the icon in the queries pane. Okay, now back to our data. And to create our true or false result, I'm going to use the list.contains function, list.contains, then open bracket. We can see the arguments there. The first argument is a list, then the second item is the value, and then the third item is the equation criteria. Our list is our filter list that we just created. The value is whatever value we have in the item column. So let's get the item column. Now the equation criteria is optional, so we'll come back to that in a few moments time. There you go, that query has now run and it's filtering to show the records that have either Alpha or Charlie as their values. Currently, our filter list has Alpha or Charlie and they both have uppercase characters at the start. By default, Power Query is case sensitive. So if we wanted to include uppercase and lowercase characters, this is where the equation criteria comes in. Now there's lots of options around the equation criteria, such as how we deal with various country specific special characters. But for this, we're just gonna think about uppercase and lowercase. So if we want to treat uppercase and lowercase characters as the same, we can use the comparer, ordinal ignore case. In that case, uppercase and lowercase letters would both be treated exactly the same. We don't have that issue in our example, so let's just delete that. Okay, let's test this out. So from home, close and load, now select close and load. I've already got this loaded as a connection only, so I right click on that, go to load two, and then let's load this as a table on a new worksheet, click okay. So now if we change our list, so it includes Delta and Charlie, and come to the result of our query, go to data, 
and click refresh all. And that query now updates to just show Delta and Charlie. And equally, if we have more items in our list, that will also work with our data set. So there we have Charlie, Alpha and Delta all included in our filter. OK, let's just head back over into Power Query. Here we've drilled down into our filter list. But what if we don't want to drill down into this list, but we want to leave it as a table? In that scenario, we can drill down inside the list.contains function. So filter list there is the name of our table. In square brackets, we can put the name of the column that we want to use. And that column in this scenario is also called filter list. We'll click away. Oh, actually, I need a space in there. Filter space list. Fantastic. There we go. So now we've got our filter list as a table, but we've drilled down into that list inside our table.select rows transformation. If we want the list of items inside the filter list to be the items that are excluded, we can use the word not. So in there, we've got where each is not the list.contains. So when we click away, we should just see the items that are listed as Bravo. So that's how we can use list.contain to filter by a list. If we have a reasonably simple filtering scenario, we don't have to mess around with the M code at all. Let me just delete this filtered row step. And instead, we can use the merge transformation. So from the home ribbon, I'll click merge queries. The first table is the data table. And then the second table, I can set that as the filter list. I'll select the item column in the first table and the filter list column in the second table, and then change the join kind to a right outer. Then I'll click OK. So that now filters so that it only includes the item that were contained in that list. So you'll see that Bravo is not included in that item column. We don't need this filter list anymore, so we can simply delete that column. So you might be wondering which method should you choose, list.contains or merge? Well, it depends. If you've got a reasonably simple scenario, merge is significantly faster. On 100,000 rows, filtering by two values, when I tested it, it turns out that list.contains took 18.2 seconds, but using the merge method took 1.6 seconds. So it's over 10 times faster. But if you're using merge, it does mean you can't create any more complex filtering scenarios because you can only filter by the columns that are there. So it depends. Ultimately, merge is significantly faster, but might not be complex enough for your scenario. So we've looked at how we can filter rows by a list, but what if we want to filter columns by a list? So filter the output of our query. Here in our columnist query, you can see we have the word date, item, region, and value. And here in our data query, we have date, item, model, region, and value. So let's say that we want to filter to only show the columns that are contained in our column list. How can we do that? Well, let's start by selecting some columns. And then from the home ribbon, we can go to remove columns, remove other columns. In the formula bar, you'll see that this retains a list of the columns that we want to keep. So based on what we've seen so far, we can call our column list query. And the column name in our column list is column space list. There we go, I'll click away, and now we just see date, item, region, and value. Let's close and load that into Excel. And let's change our column list tables. We've got date, and let's say we then want model, then region, then value. Come back to our query, click refresh, and as you can see, those columns then update. And they also update in the same order as the list that we provided to it. Now, I would recommend performing this as one of the steps towards the end of your query, because any other steps that are based on column names that no longer exist will cause an error. So we want to make sure that we maintain the column names until the last moment when we can then filter down to just show the columns that we want. For our final example, let's suggest we want to return the rows, but only the rows for the three models that have the highest values. So first we need to group by model, work out what the top three models are, 
and then only return the rows for those models. Now over time, as our data changes, so will the list that we want to filter by. So this needs to be completely dynamic. I'm going to start by duplicating my data query. I'll call this dynamic. And then I'm going to remove the previous steps. Let's begin by calculating the top three items. So I'll select the model column, then from the home ribbon, I'll click group by. My new column name, I'll call that total. The operation will be a sum and the column will be based on the value. Then I'll click OK to show the summarized values. Then with the total column selected, I'll sort these by clicking Z2A. So we now have a descending order. For this example, we said we only wanted to keep the top three. So we'll go to keep rows, keep top rows, select three and then click OK. Then from the model column, go to transform and click convert to list. So that gives me a list of the top three models. So in our applied steps, change type is the table that existed before we started the group and find out what the top three models were. And model is the step that shows us what those three models are. So using these two pieces of information, we can write a formula that would filter to just show the top three models. I'll click on the FX icon. And now let's write our formula. So if you remember, the formula to filter a list was table dot select rows. I've just been caught out by the, by the bug there that repeats the word table. Then I'll enter an opening bracket. The step I want to use is the change to type step. And then we use that each keyword to indicate that we want to do this for every single row in our table. And then let's use the list.contains. And the step name for our list was model. So that was the previous step. That's model. And then the name of the column from our change type step was also called model. We put that into square brackets to indicate that it is the column. Fantastic. We've got two closed brackets. You can click away. And now our model column shows only Picasso, Rembrandt and Picasso Pro because they were the three top models. Well, that's it. That's how we can filter by a list in Power Query. We've seen that we can use list.contains, we can use the merge transformation, we can filter column names, and we can also create a dynamic filter. Now, if you wanna take your Power Query skills to the next level, why not check out our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy, where we've got a complete Power Query course to help you take your skills to the next level. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.